Hello, everyone. This is going to apply to only specific people, a specific demographic or group of people. Um, I guess we could call this a prophetic revelation, rhema of some sort. Um, so I'm just going to get right into it. I believe it was Thanksgiving Day of 2019. I had woken up from a dream. And I believe I shared it on this channel. Although, although I didn't really have it figured out at that time. So this was just over two years ago. But in the dream, I knew that I was in some kind of birthing room, and I knew that I had just given birth. But there was a midwife or nurse of some sort, some lady that was there, and she said to me, you still have to push out the placenta also known as the afterbirth also known as apparently the third stage of labor I just went and researched all this um, because I have not ever been pregnant nor given birth thank God and even just reading about it just kind of made me feel uncomfortable. I've never liked the idea of any of that. But when we have dreams and visions regarding this kind of stuff, it's about promises being birthed and manifested and coming to fruition. So that's what we're talking about here prophetically. So in the dream, I knew I had just given birth to a baby. And I don't, I don't remember now exactly like what I saw in exactly what order in the dream but I had given birth to the baby and I was being told and and I was surprised that it didn't hurt the actual birth of the actual baby did not hurt and from what I remember it really didn't even seem to require any effort from me it just came to be right and that speaks to how when God promises us something he does what he says, right? His word does not return to him void. As his Logos word says, promises us, he brings it to fruition and manifestation in his timing, his way. And it really doesn't require um, any effort from us. He just does it. Um, generally speaking, you know, unless there's some kind of condition that he put on it or something. Um, but I was being told that there, that I would have to put forth effort to birth the placenta. And in the dream, I was afraid. I did not want to push out the placenta. I did not want to birth it. And I didn't want to because I was afraid that it would hurt. And so I was told, you know, well, you have to, you have to, right? Now I just went and researched this and apparently if a birthing mother does not push out the placenta, if that is not removed from her uterus, it could cause infection and uh, worst case scenario, even death. It could cause excess bleeding and infection and hemorrhaging and death. And I guess if I'm completely honest, that deep down, I don't know if it's a fear or if it's discernment or if it's both. But as far back as I can remember, whenever I 
was old enough to comprehend the concept of giving birth and all of that, um, the notion just always came to me of dying during childbirth. Um, and so anyway, in this dream, I'm being told, no, you have to push it out. You have to birth the placenta. And I was, you know, so again, I explained I didn't want to. I was afraid that it, hurt, that it would hurt. And I was told, well, you have to. And so at that point in the dream, um, now the, the baby that had come out, again, I don't remember if I saw this before or after this point in the dream, but I know at some point in the dream, I saw my baby and my baby looked about, and I just kind of knew, you know, how in dreams you just know things about two years old. And I remember the baby had like olive green eyes and I forget what that means. I think it meant something with like Holy Spirit or something. I'll have to go refresh myself on that. But, but the baby was about two years old. So, you know, I'm afraid to push out the placenta. I'm being told I have to. I'm afraid it's going to hurt. And then this very sinister looking man kind of like shows up from the hallway through the door and he's standing there and this part's kind of gross and, and grotesque and um, graphic but he he's he's very big very very big man and kind of makes me think of you know um, Nephilim and and I I know now that he represented like the enemy Lucifer Satan um, very big, very broad, big shoulders, like tall, big, sinister looking man. And he was kind of standing there and, you know, he had his hand ready to reach in. Um, and I guess it was his middle finger, but his middle finger looked very... It looked grotesquely similar to like... Uh, a phallus of some sort but it was pointed um, and so nothing was really said but it was just kind of like clear either you push this afterbirth out yourself or we're gonna pull it out for you and it was as if I was almost being threatened with like abortion almost although the baby had already been born okay but I was being threatened that this very grotesque, ugly, sharp thing might be, you know, um, put into my, my, my body. Tigress, come here. Don't do that. Sorry, my cat. Okay. Um, and so I assume that I did what I was supposed to do. All The only other thing that I remember from this dream is that when it was all said and done, there was a man that showed up. And this man was embracing me kind of sideways, you know, like um, shoulder to shoulder, arms around each other. And I assume because I was laying in a hospital bed kind of situation, you know. Um, and my sense about this man was that he loved me. Um, he, he was in my corner, you know. Um, I think he might have represented my kingdom spouse. Who at that point in time, <coughs> I don't think I had started discerning just yet. I think I started discerning my kingdom spouse shortly thereafter, maybe about a month later or that next month. Um... So this was a very significant dream. Didn't really know what to make of it. So I believe now I have realized what I was being told through this dream. And this is another example of how the Lord shows me things um, fairly often long before other people who are more well-known, more famous, um, 
because later on in 2020, a few months later, maybe se maybe several months later, um, someone else who was very famous in the Christian YouTube community, although now I have, the Lord has shown me this person's actually a witch, but anyway, they had a similar dream about a, about giving birth to a two-year-old baby. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. That's what I was shown months ago. So, you know, exactly two years would be what? Thanksgiving of 2021. And so here we are. Um, hold on a second. My kitty cat has decided to... Hold on. Sorry, guys. So, um, so yeah, so to flash forward two years would have been this past Thanksgiving, about uh, one, two, just over two months ago. And here's what's interesting. So th let's go back a couple months. Right after Thanksgiving, I'm not sure exactly what day it is, and I don't have my journal with me, but I know it was the end of November of 2021. I had a dream that I knew that I was about to give birth. And then in the month of December, I had a dream that I could hear my baby crying, and again, this is going to be a little graphic and gross, but um, I had a dream that I heard my baby crying from between my legs, like as if the baby had crowned, the baby's head was already out. And then, I believe it was last month, January of 2022. I believe it was last month. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. I had a dream of my kingdom spouse. And he walked over to where I was. And there was a little pantry that I had. Um, and I pulled out this little container of white donut holes with sprinkles on them and I gave them to him. And the interpretation of that dream is that my kingdom spouse um, was pursuing me. Um, the pantry represents my heart, the treasures in my heart, the, the things that I have to offer. Um, donuts usually mean empty promises because they're in the shape of a zero. But the donut holes are actually what is missing, right? They're they're like what's they represent the hole of the donut. They they rep, they represent um, kind of the opposite. So it, it's like the opposite. So it's it's a it is a promise. It is something of value. It's what's missing. And you know the color white represents purity. And the sprinkles. I looked that up, and it, it represents that. My kingdom spouse is being called to be confident and bold and courageous and things like that. Um, and so the Lord was showing me that your kingdom spouse, your promise, um, he realizes that he is missing out on what you have to offer. He wants what you have to offer. He wants to come and partake of what you have to offer. Here's what I just received revelation on. So there has been a particular method, I guess we could call it, of prayer that the Lord has had me executing the whole month of December, the whole month of January, and the little bit that we're into February and that I've, you know, had the energy to exert so far, um, the Lord has had me really approaching the throne of grace quite a bit, nonstop, 
just about, um, and asking the Lord for very specific things, very particular things. And as of just recently, he's had me start doing that on behalf of my kingdom spouse as well. And my cat, which would be my little family, right? Um, all the things that would be under, um, not under, I mean, my cat's under my authority. My husband, uh, I'm not going to say he'd be under my authority, but, um, domain, that, that, that's what I'm looking for in part of my domain. Okay. Um, and so what the Holy Spirit just revealed to me is that what I've been doing, and, and this work has been very, what's the word, tedious, this prayerful, this, this spiritual work, this prayerful work that I've been doing all month of December and January and now into February, this is the afterbirthing process. Now, I know you could say, well, you know, you, you could try to argue that, well, that doesn't make sense because your kingdom spouse hasn't shown up yet in the natural but again, we walk by faith. Faith is the substance of things not seen, right? And so I believe the Lord has been t basically telling me, your kingdom spouse, your promise, um, it, it, it's a done deal. Now let's go back to the dream I had, Thanksgiving 2019. And let's focus on... I was told that I have to push out the placenta, the afterbirth. And I didn't want to because I knew there would be some discomfort involved. And then all of a sudden, basically Satan shows up and what? Threatens me. That's what's been going on. December, January, and now we're into February. This has been the afterbirthing process. This is the, the third and final, as far as I know, stage of labor. Now, I don't know for a fact when this, is, this process is going to come to an end. Because, you know... What comes after that, right? So you, you birth the baby, and then you birth the placenta, and then what comes after that? You get to hold your baby, and from what I'm told, that's the moment that everybody looks forward to, right? That's the moment that everybody says is worth it, that makes it all worth it, all the pain, all the work, all the struggle, all the discomfort, all the life threatening process <laughs> is when you have that moment of intimacy with your baby and the baby represents the promise so I don't know when that moment's going to come exactly for myself or for any of you who are in this same season as me but if you are if this resonates then this is for you if you find yourself, um, if, if, if this aligns with what's been going on with you lately to some extent or another, then you are probably in the same season of birthing your promise, whatever that may be. That could be a kingdom spouse. It could be whatever that is for you. But... When I started doing it, when, when God started me doing this in the month of December, I really didn't know what was going on. It kind of caught me off guard. It's not what I expected. And it just kept going. And he's had me doing it. And it has been very tedious. There's another word I wanna, that I'm thinking of. I can't put my finger on right now. Tedious. I can't think of it. But yeah, just very monotonous, tedious, monotonous, um, 
and it has required some perseverance in a sense to just continue to do the work, just to continue to do what he is telling me to do, to approach the throne of grace and ask for all these very specific things over and over and over and over. If you've been paying attention on this channel over the last couple months, I have posted on the community page and I'm pretty sure I have verbally mentioned about knocking, right? That those that passage about knocking, those parables, right? About the widow who went to court and the neighbor who knocks on the door and all that, right? That's what the Lord has had me doing. He's had me just knocking and knocking and knocking. He's had me asking and asking and asking, approaching the throne of grace and approaching the throne of grace and approaching the throne of grace. And it has been monotonous and it has been tedious and it has been draining to some extent. But it has been the process of birthing the placenta. It's the afterbirth process. It is the third and final stage of birthing your baby, of birthing the promise. And what's interesting is the Lord has told me and confirmed it with two other sisters in Christ that I know that I'm supposed to be resting. My, my, my main focus, my priority right now is to be resting until my promise comes, until my kingdom spouse comes. And so this all lines up, doesn't it? It makes sense. So you birth the baby, and then you birth the placenta, and then you get a moment of rest, and then you get to hold your baby. Then you get to embrace and have intimate connection with your baby, your promise. So I just thought I would share this because as you guys know, I'm a verbal processor. It helps me to kind of talk it out. Um, but I wanted to share this because those of you who are in the same season as me, let this be an encouragement to you. That we will be holding our babies soon. Amen. In the name of Yeshua the Christ of Nazareth.